Hey everybody, it is me, Mrs. Hawley. We are going to work on characteristics of civilizations today. We talked about the Neolithic Revolution, which ended with people becoming sedentary, remember, staying in one place. And that's going to then lead to the growth of civilizations. So we're going to actually identify characteristics of civilizations and talk about what led to their development. So let's take a peek. All right, you don't have this. We're not doing this actually on the Nearpod, but just a question to review, why didn't Paleolithic people live in large civilizations? So think about that for a sec. Do you remember why? Why did they live in small groups? I hope you said because they were nomadic, they couldn't support large groups, they couldn't feed them all. We've gone over that a number of times. So Paleolithic people did not live in large groups because they were constantly moving and there was a limited supply of food resources. All right, let's look at the top of page 24 in your workbook. It says a civilization is a complex society in which a number of people live. The first civilizations which emerged after the Neolithic Revolution between 5,500 5, and 2,000 BCE were Mesopotamia, Ancient Egypt, Shang, China, and the Indus River Valley Civilization. These first civilizations began as cities, and these cities were larger, more populated, and more complex than the Neolithic villages. So it says, for each of the following characteristics, provide evidence from the town, city, state, and or country you live in to prove that you live in a civilization. So the first thing I wanna do is explain what those features are so you understand. So when we talk about complex religion, we know that religion um, includes beliefs about the cause, the nature, and the purpose of the universe and usually involves rituals and moral codes that regulate people's conduct, like the Ten Commandments, tell people how they should live their lives on a daily basis. So if you think about how you live in a civilization and does your civilization have complex religion, I would say yes. Um, I am Jewish, I belong to a congregation, to a synagogue, um, and we go to services on Friday nights and everybody takes part, yay. Okay, so that's an example. Okay, civilizations have job specialization. That means that because there was a surplus of food finally, not everyone was needed to farm. So that enabled some people to stop farming and instead focusing on some other skill. And it says here, people have great expertise in a particular area and complete the work effectively. So someone might be really good at making ceramic bowls to store food in. Well, that person is going to spend all their time making ceramic bowls. Well, how are they gonna feed themselves? They don't farm. What they'll do is they'll trade their bowls for food. That way they don't have to farm and other people can have the use of their bowls. All right, we know that, we just talked about it. Okay, our next one, cities. An inhabited place of greater size, population, or importance than a town or village. Do we have cities in our civilization? Yes, we do. Albany, 
Albany, New York. The capital of New York is a city. Schenectady is a city. Troy is a city. So, yep, we've got cities. Our next feature of civilization is government. And government is the system of people, laws, and officials that define and control the area in which they live. So it's people who are in charge, they are responsible for making laws, and this helps maintain order and keep this city, the civilization, um, moving along smoothly. Do we have government? Absolutely, we have government in our civilization. After all, we live in Albany. Most of you live in Albany County. I live in Schenectady County, but it's still part of South County. But Albany County is the seat of New York State government. You have your own colony town government. So yes, our civilization has government. Next, civilizations have language and writing systems. So this is a method of human communication, either spoken or written, consisting of the use of words in a structured and conventional way. Do we have language in our civilization? Absolutely we do. Most people speak English. We also have a number of other languages that a lot of people speak. Spanish, Mandarin Chinese, Urdu, doesn't matter. We have a lot. There is no official language of the United States. Do we have a writing system? Absolutely we do. We write in English or what other language you speak. This is an example of Sumerian writing. And we're going to learn about that. That's called cuneiform. Okay, moving on. Technology. Technology is defined as the application or applying scientific knowledge to the practical aims of human life. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying people use new knowledge to help make lives easier. And what is this a picture of? One of the very first wheels. So do we have technology in our civilization? Of course we do. We have all kinds of technology. Automobile technology, computer technology, phone technology, you name it, we got it. Social classes or a social hierarchy. Okay, this just means there's a system of organizing people into different ranks. One of the earliest societies, Mesopotamia, had their own social structure. You have the king and nobility, the nobles at the very top. Then you have the priests. Then you have scribes. These are people who can write and they record information. Then you have craftsmen who produce goods and peasants who farm the land. And then lastly, slaves. Do we have social classes in the United States in our civilization? Unfortunately, we really do. You've got the wealthy at the very top in our society. Then you've got upper middle class, middle class, lower middle class, and then the poor at the bottom. So we do have this feature of civilization in our society. All right, we, oops, we are going to, how do I go backwards? We are going to watch a short video on the first civilizations. And then you are going to answer the questions on page 25 in your workbook. All right, so let's take a watch here, a watch. Let's take a look at Friday's this Friday's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. A long, long time ago, thousands... Oops, let's go to the beginning. How about that? Today we're going to learn about civilization. 
A long, long time ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, people lived very differently than they do today. Instead of living in a house or a city and buying their food at a store, people lived in small groups, hunting animals for meat and gathering wild food like vegetables, berries, and fruits. We call these people hunter-gatherers, which is easy to remember because that's what they did. Most hunter-gatherers lived so long ago that we have no written record or history of them. Since they lived before written history began, we call them prehistoric. Most of what we know about prehistoric people was learned by archaeologists. Archaeologists are scientists who study humans by looking at what people have left behind. Archaeologists discovered that at some point, the hunter-gatherers learned to grow their own food and domesticated animals like cows, pigs, chickens and goats. This is called agriculture. Agriculture helped provide a steady source of food. People were even able to grow and store more food than they needed. Hunter-gatherers needed to move around to find animals and food. But in order to farm, people need to stay in one place. Staying in one place with extra food, people started to build villages. More and more people were able to live together because there was enough food. There was so much food available that some people began to be able to do work that was not directly related to getting enough food to eat. Those people started to specialize or concentrate on becoming experts in one kind of work. That meant that one person could learn how to make really good pottery and another person could learn to weave better cloth and they could trade those things to the people growing food and get what they needed to eat. As technology improved and inventions like the wheel and irrigation allowed people to grow even more food, villages grew bigger and became towns and cities. People began trading with people from other cities and then with places very far away. In order to keep track of these trades and their increasingly complicated lives, people began to develop writing. Several different systems of writing began as something called pictograms, or pictures of things, and then gradually changed to represent ideas and then sounds. Through all of these changes, people developed societies known as civilizations. A civilization is a culture and a way of life that usually has a few specific characteristics. Number one, civilizations need to have agriculture and extra food available. They have large cities filled with lots of people. They have specialized labor and well-developed trade. In almost all cases, they have a written language. Civilizations have strong governments. They have shared values, in ancient times, usually a shared religion. As well, they have their own style of architecture and artwork. The first known civilization developed over 7,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. Since then, many different and fascinating civilizations began popping up all over the world, and there are still many today. Do you think you can name any civilizations? All right, now that we've watched the video, let's take a look at the questions on page 25 in your workbook. So, question one asks, what makes early civilizations prehistoric? Think of the word pre, historic. You can feel free to stop the video and go back and watch the one you just saw and answer this question. Press play to review.
All right. Let's see. I said a civilization is prehistoric if it existed before written records were made. That's what prehistoric means. The time of prehistory, before history was written down. So if you didn't have something close to this, please make sure you fix your answer. Okay, question number two. What types of animals were domesticated, were tamed by Neolithic humans? You can go back through the video and press play once you've typed in your answer. Okay, friends, what types of animals were domesticated? They said in the video that cows, pigs, chickens, and goats were tamed. Do you remember what they used them for? They used them for food, the milk, the meat. They used them for their eggs, the chickens. They even used them for their skin to make clothing in the case of cows. Let's move on. Number three, what made job specialization possible? Okay, so what enabled people to specialize in certain jobs rather than everyone farming? So turn this video off, type your response, and hit play to review. Okay, friends, this is what I said. I said staying in one place and growing a surplus of food made job specialization possible. There was so much food available, they didn't need everyone to farm. So people began to specialize in different skills. How did those people get the food they needed if they weren't farming? That's right. They traded for food. Good job. Okay, number four. Why did systems of writing develop? Okay, go back to the video if you need to. Why did systems of writing develop? So press stop, answer the question, and press play to review. Okay, my friends, I said that systems of writing developed to help keep track of trade and details of people's lives. In fact, it showed you a bit of cuneiform. That was one of the earliest forms of writing. And that was why it was created, to keep records of trade. Okay, number five, list some of the similar features that early civilizations shared. You can use the ones that we talked about at the beginning of the video, or some of the ones that they mentioned in the little short video that you watched. So turn the, this video off, review, type your answer, and then hit play to go over your answer. Welcome back. Okay, I have a couple things. And I got it from stuff I did with you and from the film. I said, most civilizations have agriculture and surpluses of food. They have large cities with people. They have specialization of skills, so specialized labor. They have well-developed trade. They have written language, strong governments, shared values and religious beliefs, and architecture and artwork that was similar. Number six is asking a specific location. Where did the first civilization develop? If you don't remember, stop this, go back to the film, 
rewatch it. It's only four minutes and 40 seconds. Rewatch it and then answer the question and press play to review. Welcome back. I said for number six, the first civilizations developed over 7,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, that term literally means land between the rivers. It's an area in what is today Iran. And we'll talk about Mesopotamia as we continue. Okay, now you've got a mapping exercise to do. And we're gonna actually look at the very early river valley civilizations. So here is our map. Here we have Europe, Africa, Asia. You've got Arabia and India, which is a subcontinent of Asia. You have the Atlantic Ocean here and the Indian Ocean here and the Pacific all the way over here. So you have nine questions that you are going to answer that go with this map. So question number one says, based on the map, early civilizations developed near what geographic Feature. These civilizations, ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, the Indus Valley, and ancient China, look at where they are and what is similar about their locations. What is a similar geographic feature? Type your answer and then press play to review. I hope you said what I said. I said early civilizations began near rivers. All of those civilizations are in river valleys. Number 2A, which civilization is furthest east? So which one is furthest toward the Pacific Ocean? Stop the video. Answer the question and press play to review. I hope you said what I said. Ancient China was furthest east. Good job. Okay, to be or not to be. <laughs> Which civilization was furthest west? So which civilization was all the way, was as close to anyway, the Atlantic Ocean, which was the closest. So stop the video, answer the question, press play to review. I hope you said ancient Egypt was furthest west, because it was. If you look in Africa, the Nile River Valley civilization was the furthest west. Good job. Okay, here's our map again. And it says, near which river was ancient Egyptian civilization located? So here is ancient Egyptian civilization and you wanna answer which river it was located near. So stop this video. Type your response and press play to review, please. Welcome back. I hope you said the Nile River. Egyptian civilization was located near the Nile River. If you did, awesome. If you didn't, that's okay. Change your answer. We learn by making mistakes. You know I make tons of them. All right, our next question, number four, near which rivers were the Mesopotamian civilizations located? Rivers, there's more than one. 
So stop this video, look at your map, and answer the question. Please press play to review. Okay, my friends, I said that Mesopotamia was located near the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Tigris and Euphrates rivers. That is Mesopotamia. Remember I said Mesopotamia literally means the land between the rivers. It's talking about the Tigris and the Euphrates. I remember them because I remember the Tigris is on top. So the Tigris is over the Euphrates River. Okay. Mesopotamia was also called the cradle of civilization because it was one of the earliest civilizations that developed. All right, number five, near which river was ancient Chinese civilization located? So on your map, locate ancient Chinese civilization and tell me which river they were closest to. Press play to review. All right, welcome back. Hope you said ancient China was located near the Huanghe River. This river is also known as the Yellow River. The Yellow River. Do you know why it's called the Yellow River? There is a pigment in the soil at the bottom of the river and it makes it the water when it reflects on the bottom it makes it look kind of yellow so that's where they got the name from awesome let's move on we're almost done here's our map again just a little review okay near which river was the ancient indus civilization located so you're going to find the indus valley and you're going to answer question number six. So stop the video, type your answer, and then press play to review. Okay, friends, welcome back. I hope you said what I wrote. I wrote that ancient Indian civilization was located near the Indus River. Okay, the Indus River Valley is where that civilization grew. Number seven, ooh, continent review. On which continent was Mesopotamian civilization located? On which continent? So take a minute, stop the video, answer the question, and then press play to review. Welcome back. What did you say for number seven? I said that Mesopotamia was located in Western Asia. It's technically part of Asia. Hopefully you did. If not, you can change your answer. That's how we learn. Okay, here's our map for the last time. On which continent was the Indus River Valley civilization located? Which continent was the Indus River Valley civilization located? Okay, stop the video, type your response, hit play to review. Welcome back. I hope you said Asia. I said Asia. So ancient Indian civilization was located in Asia. India is part of Asia. All right, our last question. What advantages were there to settle where these civilizations did? Why did they settle where they settled? 
What was so important about those locations? Something that they all had in common. Stop the video, think about it, type a good response, and it can be more than one thing, and then press play to review. Welcome back, friends. All right, we're talking about advantages, why ancient civilizations arose where they did. Well, we know that those civilizations arose near rivers. That's why we call them the early river valley civilizations. So I said that the rivers provided the people with fertile soil for farming, all of those rivers flood. And when they do, they bring that very fertile soil up from the bottom and that gets deposited along the shore. And then they can use that soil for farming. I also said it was advantageous to settle there because they had enough water for drinking, for irrigating their crops, watering their crops, because you can't put your crops right next to the river because what happens to all of those rivers? They what? That's right, they flood. So you have to put your crops a little bit away from the river where they won't get destroyed by floods. But that means you have to bring the water to the crop. So you can use that water for irrigation. That's what that means. And you can use that water for your animals. Okay, hey, we've gone through those nine questions. We have one more task to do. You are going to do a drop, a drag and drop activity now on page 27 in your workbook. It says label the map. So you're going to put the Nile River where it goes. The Indus River, the Tigris River, the Euphrates River, the Huang He River, which is the Yellow River, and I included the Yangtze River, which also has an arrow, so it's the one that is left over. So stop this video, drag and drop your locations, and then we'll go over your answers together. Okay, friends. Let's see if you labeled your map correctly. I'll bet you did. All right, our first one is the Nile River. Here it is in Egypt. It starts, there it goes all the way down. That is the Nile River. Our next one is the Euphrates River. Euphrates River. What did I say is above the Euphrates? And by above, I mean right here. I should say, I guess, to the right. Yep, you're right. That's the Tigris River. Tigris River and the Euphrates River make up what's called, what was it called again? Begins with an M. That's right, Mesopotamia. Good job. Okay, our next one is the Indus River. This is the Indus River here. By the way, this is a very sacred river called the Ganges River. Okay. Our next one is the Huanghe or the Yellow River. And I included the Yangtze River just because I wanted to. <laughs> so hopefully your map looks like my map because you are going to have a quiz tomorrow. So make sure you study this map. Remember where everything is located. Remember to look over the features of civilization. Those could be on there as well. Okay, so until next time. I will speak to you again. Have a great day, friends.